I'm not gonna lie to you, I still get a bit nervous. So bear with me, cause I get nervous. Okay, but God's got me, God's got us. So let's just go ahead and get into this. It's officially day 18. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you. <laughs> I was just thinking about how I used to be really nervous really really nervous let me tell you about this one time before we get into the message i used to be really nervous when i was on the swim team in my high school and especially when we would have the four by 100 and that just means that there's four people doing 100 meters and it's a relay Ooh -wee. <laughs> i would usually be the third or the yeah I usually be the second or the third because that's when I was really slow at the time and eventually I moved up to <laughs> being the um, first or the fourth okay but I used to just be so nervous and all of us were like <laughs> like oh gosh I used to be really bad but I've grown I've grown and I hope you've grown too if you were ever nervous okay okay so today's day 18 and we're not talking about nervousness we're talking about steadfast God's unfeeling promises so yesterday was 414 and I'm not into numerology or anything like that whenever I come up on this date I always think about Esther 414 for you were born for such a time as this and everybody who's watching you were born for such a time as this right I got my nails done <laughs> oh I did my hair. Do you like it? I put beads in there. You know, because we're going on a little trip. We're going on a little trip. Okay. Hi. <laughs> we're going on a little trip in a couple days, which is we'll probably be pausing the the series, but we'll see. I'll do my best and see if I have really good service um, where I go. Okay. So let's get into this. steadfast. God's unfailing promises. Steadfast means resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering, firmly fixed in place, determination. Okay? Some synonyms to steadfast is loyal, faithful, devout, true, dedicated, devoted, and good. And some antonyms to steadfast is faithless, treacherous, false, disloyal excuse me and hesitant so okay I have a bunch of notes but just bear with me if God is firm in his promises then why shouldn't we be firm about believing them Ooh, ooh. let me read that again if God is firm in his promises why shouldn't we be firm about believing them why shouldn't we be dedicated to believing God's promises now, if they were promises that you think was God, but all the signs say that it's not God, most likely this will result in delusion, aka delusion. I was in delulu for some time in my life, <laughs> but it, I mean it's true. I'm, I'm not lying to you. Delulu delusion is a complete real thing where you think that God has said this. Um, and you almost fix your fix yourself on this promise that God said that God we think that God said that would come to pass, but it never came to pass. All the signs are saying that it's not true, but you have it in your head that this is gonna come to pass. So we want to make sure that we are actually listening to God's promises on what He's saying in our life. We have a couple scriptures that we're going to go over and I'm going to go back and forth between these scriptures and what we're going to be talking about the main thing. But the first scripture we're, we're going to be talking about is 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. This is my big girl Bible. This is my, um, this is the Christian standard Bible. It's amazing. And I think you all should get it too. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. This is not sponsored at all. But this is absolutely huge. 
you can write on the sides highlight it anything you want to super easy to read yeah the words may be a little bit small but honestly it looks like it condenses everything in general so like when i say it condenses it's it's smaller so it looks like there's less to read but there's not it's the same i like reading this bible because it's so huge and i love to take notes in it and i want to go to first corinthians 15 and 58 even though i have it written right here i just want to show you how beautiful it looks like look at this this is ezekiel and i just drew in it and i said proof proof of restoration is speed and number twi number twi twi number 25 means the highest form of godly love i just think it looks so beautiful i encourage you to get it it's the christian standard bible version and it's in a beautiful color of blue okay it's on amazon it's on amazon okay let me show you the front it's on a big old binder let me show you the front okay this is holy bible christian standard bible day spring okay you should get it mm, it's so good okay all right so first corinthians 15 and 58 it says therefore dear brothers and sisters be steadfast immovable always excelling in the lord's work because you know that your labor in the lord is not in vain i want to talk about labor first before we get to the steadfast part your labor in the Lord is not in vain. When I saw labor, I related it to toiling and to wrestling. When you labor in the Lord, you're, you're, you're wrestling with God. And I think of the story with Jacob. Jacob was fighting this man, right? And I believe that it was Jesus Christ himself. Um, but Jacob was fighting this man and he was starting to win a little bit, right? But he said, you know what? I'm not going to leave until you bless me. And that man broke <laughs> a part of Jacob to like, basically, I wouldn't say like disable him, but like, you know, he, he broke his hip and he was like, mm, chill out, chill out, chill out. I see, I see that you toiled. I see that you wrestled with me. <clears throat> and I believe that in the same scripture, it says, because you know that your labor, your wrestling in the Lord is not in vain. So as you remain in God's presence, as you wrestle and as you toil with him, God wants that. He doesn't want you to just come up to him, ask for this, and then leave. If it takes time in the presence of God, then do it. Honestly, most um, most crazy prayers are are done in the time of toiling are done in the time of intercession are done in the time of wrestling with the lord okay so let's read this whole scripture again therefore my dear brothers and sisters be steadfast remember we said steadfast means firmly fixed in place it means determination it means dedicated therefore my dear brothers and sisters be steadfast be dedicated be devoted be good be devout immovable which means we ain't moving always excelling in the lord's word so that means we're always serving we're always doing what god is telling us to do even when we don't feel like it because you know that as you toiled as you wrestled as you labored in the lord that that's not in vain just as we were talking about yesterday how wait though no, that was my alone time with god <laughs> we didn't talk about this yesterday but um my alone time with god was the tears that I sowed in past seasons were seeds for what is to blossom right now in my life. And man, are they blossoming, okay? So what you did in past seasons, what you're doing now, laboring in the Lord is not in vain, okay? The next scripture, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. It says, be sober-minded, okay? Be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion excuse me, looking for anyone he can devour. 
Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. So, big old title, you're not alone, okay? You have to be sober-minded, you have to be alert, because the enemy is always going to try to distract you, he's going to try to make sure that you're off guard, he's going to try to make sure that you are so off your path that you don't even know how to get back on, right? So, he's looking for anybody that he can devour, but it says in verse 9, resist him, right? Resist him, firm in the faith. What was another what was another synonym of steadfast? Being firm, being loyal, being um, being faithful. We have to remain firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings that are being experienced by your brothers and sisters are ha like they're happening throughout the world. So if that's the case, if I know that I may be struggling from healing from a painful ending. Say I'm, I'm struggling from a family member that just died, right? The thing is, is that in the scripture it says, resist, resist the enemy, be firm in the faith, knowing that other people around the world are dealing with this exact same thing. So we have to know that we're not alone in this situation. We have to know that we have to be steadfast in this situation, right? Psalm 20 and 8 says, they collapse and fall, but we rise and stand firm. It's important that we rise and stand firm in God's unfailing promises. The thing is, is that if we are hesitant, if we are feeling shaky, if we are feeling faithless in our faith, then there's, we have no strength to get up and be firm in what God has told us to do. In Isaiah 35 and 3, it says, strengthen the weak hands, steady the shaking knees. We have to be steadfast. We have to be dutifully firm and unwavering in what God has told us to do. Job 11 and 15 says, then you will hold your head high, free from fault. You will be firmly established and unafraid. Again, we keep talking about being firm. Firm is a part of being steadfast. We have to be steadfast in God's unfailing promises in order for us to, you know, get to, you know, our healing journey, right? We got to be steadfast. Okay, so I have some notes that says, even while you're faithful in the good times, God still desires for you to be faithful in the disastrous times as well. There's going to be doubters everywhere in this world. No doubt about that. <laughs> no doubt about that, Right. But it's up to you to stand ten toes down on the promises and prophetic words that God has spoken over you. So my example for today is I'm going to chat a little bit about Elizabeth in the Bible, uh, specifically in Luke. To be honest, I don't even know if there's another Elizabeth in the Bible. I haven't even checked. But we're talking about Elizabeth in Luke 1. And... Just to give you a quick background, Elizabeth was told that she was going to have a baby, okay? She was to name him John, right? She was also to not cut his hair, and I believe he wasn't able, I believe he wasn't told to eat meat either. I don't remember that part, but um, there were certain rules for this baby to um, to come to pass, okay? Now, Elizabeth was a little old mama. She was an old little lady, right? But um, she knew that John was supposed to be born in her, okay? So when her husband found out, immediately he went to doubt in a way, right? But the angel had to close his mouth until John was born, okay? <clears throat> and I said, kindly shut his mouth so there would be no harm to the prophetic word that was spoken. I have two things from that. Sometimes we shouldn't just tell everybody the promises that God spoke over us. There are plenty of monitoring spirits out there waiting for that information. Just like in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. So there are plenty of monitoring spirits 
waiting for that information just to use it against you. So, note to yourself, don't be telling everybody what you be doing. Okay? The other point I have to this example in Luke 1, if you want to if you want to read it, it's Luke 1. <clears throat> Sometimes we shouldn't, well, mainly all the time, um, badmouth our prophetic words um, because life and death are in the power of the tongue. If we are continuously badmouthing the promises that God gave us, badmouthing the, pro the prophetic words that, that God gave us, well, now it's sort of looking as if we don't believe uh, that we're doubting. And it's almost looking as if we don't even care about the promise because we're talking about it as if it's just someone else's promise, right? As if it's if it as if it's somebody else's life, but it's not. So if I were to say, <clears throat> say my promise was I'm to get a specific tree. I know this is very random, but I'm to get a specific tree. Um this is this is my promise, right? I, I'm to get a an apple tree. And this apple tree was never is never gonna die. But this is my inheritance. This is what God promised me, right? And I keep bad mouthing this promise saying, man, I don't even know if I'll even be able to tend to this tree. Um, this tree is just going to get so overcrowded. Um, all these branches are going to hit my house if I, if I even get this apple tree. And it's just, you can see how it's just complaining and, and doubting and unbelief and how honestly that promise can really just like shrivel 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 down and the thing is is that even though god's promises are yes and amen his promises are also conditional and i want us to know that because if we're going to continue to bad mouth our promises or if we're going to continue to not even come into agreement with god's promises or his prophetic words um then there's no reason for us to even receive it right so know to yourself don't bad mouth your prophetic words or um your promises okay all right in closing the father's mouth <clears throat> john's mouth the promise was able to be birthed in luke 1 and 45 it stated blessed is the woman that believed that the lord would fulfill his promises to her so Belief is a prerequisite to receiving the promise. But as we believe, we also have to be steadfast. We can't just say, I believe, and then just walk out. We have to believe and continuously believe. We have to be steadfast. We have to be loyal. We have to be faithful. To who? To God. Right? So, what does this have to do with, you know, healing from painful endings, which is our big subject, right? Right? As you may have experienced um, a healing, uh, a painful ending, or you're going through it right now, um, you're going through your healing journey, or say that um, you're feeling less captured by the bondage that you may have went through from this painful ending, or say maybe you're feeling as if you haven't even thought about this situation in one to six days, maybe two to six weeks, or a month or two months, right? <clears throat> Healing in Jesus is still required and also being faithful and being faithful to God and abiding by what he is saying for your life is still required. And the thing is, is that we still have to be, we still have to dedicate ourselves to him, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of our healing journey, even in the midst of being too busy we, we still have to remain faithful and devoted to God. Um, and the thing is, is that we shouldn't just be faithful to God for his promises. Because that can sort of turn into idolatry. Because you're basically saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to hug God only to reach for the thing behind him. And that's manipulation. So we don't want to do that. But we want to make sure that we are remaining steadfast and faithful to God first and then those things can happen in God's perfect timing okay so honestly that's really it uh I did have this one last it's not a question but it's more so of a note 
If the Lord can stay faithful to us in our time of humanness, surely we can be faithful to him and steadfast and firm on the promises for us, on his promises for us, okay? So I'm going to read over those scriptures again. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, Psalm 20 and 8, Isaiah 35 and 3, Job 11 and 15, and then our main story we're talking about, Elizabeth, which is in Luke 1. Blessed is the woman that believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Okay, so make sure that we're believing. Make sure that we're steadfast. Make sure that we're loyal. Make sure that we're devoted to the one, the promise keeper and the promise giver. Okay, okay. This is pretty short. I just, I just wanted to just come in. I didn't come in yesterday. So I just wanted to touch bases with you all and just, you know, give you the good news of the Lord. Okay. Speaking of good news of the Lord, tomorrow we are going to be talking about courage and how we have to face our fears with God's strength. <clears throat> a lot of people say, um, what, what, what a lot of people say, lean into your fears or basically agree with fear to be able to get past the thing. No, we're not coming into agreement with fear at all because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Okay, so we're going to be talking about courage tomorrow. And like I said, I'm going to be going out of town, out of the country in a couple days. And so I'm trying to figure out if I should do it while I'm out. I don't know. I'll see. I'll let you know by the time I get there because um, that'll be on Thursday. So I'll let you know. But I just wanted to come in and just tell you about this. This is day 18 again. Tomorrow is going to be day 19. So that is just so exciting. Okay. I love you all. And I pray that you have a really great rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Why am I still on here?